All right. So, um, yeah. My name is Michael Parento. Uh, I'm an artist, designer, and software engineer. Uh, I wasn't always a software engineer. Um, you know, my background is, uh, as Alex was saying, not in programming. Um, but, you know, uh, today I work at a company called Reify Health where we make beautiful healthcare products and we use Clojure full stack, uh, front end and the back end. Uh, prior to that, I was, as Alex was saying, I was at Cognitect uh, prior, you know, I, I was actually, I started there uh, when it was relevance and I was there for six years. Um, so you might be familiar with some of this stuff. I see some t-shirts that I've designed out in the, out in the crowd and um, I used to make artwork for the Cognicast, uh, various covers and things like that. And um, I want to go ahead and just give a, uh, a, a brief, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, this is, this is, this is my uh, disclaimer for this talk because I, well, one, I wanted to put really, really small text that was probably unreadable just to, you know, kind of clarify that uh, I may get some things wrong. Um, some of this is really about me and my personal growth, uh, working with the Closure community for some time now. And also, um, uh, it's also it's just sort of what I've observed in the community and the community's growth over the years. And uh, there may be some bird walks, and there may be some opinions uh, in the early portion of the talk that are painful. <laughs> um, but also, uh, I promise it has a, a happy ending. Uh, I was originally introduced to Clojure and um, Relevance, actually, by Aaron Bedra back in 2010. So I've been working with Clojure, for, you know, or at least Clojure programmers for about the last seven years. And, um, you know, when I, when I first heard about Clojure, it was primarily like, you know, to me it just sounded like a bunch of buzzwords. Uh, <laughs> uh, immutability, state, functional, data. Uh, I didn't really know what any of this stuff meant and why it was important when I was introduced to Clojure or, you know, programming in general. I was just focused on, you know, interested in making software for people and interested in making it really useful and fun and easy to use. And, you know, and, and primarily in the front end, you sort of user experience. And my background is in fine arts, not in computer science. I, I didn't go to design school. Uh, I went to school for, for art and, um, you know, later got into making websites so that I could <laughs> pay, pay the bills. And, uh, um, I somewhere along the line discovered that that I had a real interest in making tools, um, you know, things that helped people solve problems. It wasn't so much like, I, I, being that I come from fine arts, you'd think that that it was fully like I was interested in in just the aesthetics of things. But um, I actually I found that um, I found it really rewarding to actually work on things that you know. Uh, helped people get things done. And, you know, my first product design process in doing any of this stuff was basically I would hang out in Photoshop and, you know, hand it off to a developer and then the developer would go and make it real. And I, this was really unsatisfying to me because, you know, I felt like whatever it was that I designed never turned out the way I intended. Um, and I didn't have the context on why. And, and you're right, like, so like, it led to sort of a disdain for develop, developers. <laughs> uh, led to a uh, real misunderstanding and uh, poor communication. So I decided that I wanted to learn how to code. And, you know, that to me just meant basic HTML and CSS. And, and ultimately what I wanted to do was, uh, I wanted to make real stuff. I, I wasn't happy with, you know, uh, essentially working in Photoshop and then the process stopping there for me. I, I wanted to actually be able to like touch it and move it around and, and you know, uh, see it come to life. And I also wanted to be more integrated on the team. Um, you know, I, I wanted to understand why things were changing along the way, whether it was due to constraints or decisions. And I wanted to be a part of the conversation and be a 
team member. Um, you know, I, I wanted better communication. <laughs> I wanted better collaboration. And after learning how to write HTML and CSS to a point where I was able to, you know, hand off HTML and CSS to developers, uh, it got better, but I was still handing HTML and CSS off to developers. So, uh, you, know, the, you know, they make it dynamic and ready for production, and, you know, but there were still issues and things were still changing, and I didn't understand why. Um, but, you know, I, at, at the time, was working at Relevance, and basically, we were writing Rails apps to talk to closure services back in 2010. We, we you know, there wasn't, um, I mean, there was like some server-oriented uh, side, like templating and like hiccup and things like that, but it wasn't, uh, you know, like primarily what we were doing to like build app web applications was writing Rails apps. and. Um, <laughs> I want to get a tomato. Uh, I loved Rails. Rails was like, I don't know, like I was familiar with HTML and CSS and like ERB like seemed to make sense and I was having like, you know, doing a lot of pair programming and, and, and learning more about modeling data and learning more about, you know, uh, the, you know, just the difference between the server and the browser and, and it was like super exciting. I felt like really productive and I was like, I was like really, really a part of the team now, you know, like we were, we were sharing code. Uh, I was in the code base, you know, working in the same stuff that everybody else was. And so it felt like I was, you know, equal first class citizen in the, you know, in the team. And, uh, and you know, and the Ruby community had all sorts of like tools that, that made sense to me that like actually like felt like even the stuff that I was paying attention to had superpowers like SAS and, um, and even like templating languages like Haml. I felt like were really super lovely. And, and then ClojureScript happened in, in you know, 2012. This, uh, um, this was, this, you know, this was like, I remember actually hanging out in the, uh, in the conference room at the Re relevance office. And while everybody was like, hanging out and like super, super jazzed, everybody was just so pumped. Like we're we're getting ready to ship Closure Script, and you know Closure is going to run in the browser, and it's just it's just amazing. And like, you know, again, like I was I was just getting used to like hanging out on Rails, and <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, finally started to feel like I was a part of the team, and everything was groovy. And then, uh, you know. Basically, we saw a lot, of less, a lot less of Ruby and a lot less Rails, and the excitement was all around ClojureScript. And I didn't actually even, like, I didn't know how to, how to take advantage of it. I didn't know how to use it. I didn't understand Clojure. I didn't understand, um, you know, I, I just didn't understand. And, and, you know, we had, you know, like, ClojureScript 1 was, was, a, was a, I don't know if you all remember that project, but that was, a, that was an attempt to kind of explain or demystify or help people get ramped up on Clojure. And even that was still, like, way over my head. And, uh, you know, like, like, I lost all my tools. I lost SAS, and I lost templating, and I lost all the things that I was just becoming familiar with. And it was like, these were kind of painful times for, for me as a, as a designer at the, you know, who had just kind of, you know, gotten ramped up with the, with, with the team. Um, you know, I, one of the things that I liked about, you know, Rails was, you know, like the asset pipeline and just like how things just kind of worked. And yeah, like Hiccup seemed kind of like Hamel, like it was really nice and like, you know, somewhat minimal, uh, but like, Man, like, I think you know, it's like Sean was just talking about par and fur, and it's like the, all of those trailing uh, parentheses and braces, and I just like, oh, uh, you know, basically, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember, I remember actually working for the first time in Hiccup uh, with uh, um, Stuart Sierra. Actually, uh, introduced it to me, and we were, we were, you know, he saw how how bad I was struggling, and um, and then he says, oh man. We got to get you set up on Emacs, <laughs> and 
you know, he, 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 cre he created a little index card for me and a little cheat sheet for like, we had, we had my Emacs going, we had Slime and Swank, and we had par edit, and I'm like slurping and barfing, and, and everything is like, like awesome. And by the end of the day, I had like put some icons in an app and made a button, and it was, I felt like I didn't really get much done. But, uh, <laughs> You know, I did spend quite a bit of time in Emacs after that, um, but I haven't quite gotten my config all set up the way I want it, so I'm not a full convert yet. <laughs> so, and then like, and then, you know, uh, and then Pedestal App happened a little later, you know, not too far after Closure Script 1. And, and Pedestal App was actually like this like super, super exciting thing. It was almost, almost as exciting as like, as Closure Script itself, it felt like in, in some ways, at least from my perspective looking in. Uh, it was just this like, wow, this is like, you know, just look at it, look at it in the browser. Like what we can do in the browser with Closure is super, super exciting. And, and, and I, saw, I saw the demo and I remember thinking, this is, this is really neat. And, uh, you know, and, and I remember actually hearing, and this is, this is, a better way to work. And I'm like, cool. I was like, so, you know, what about like SAS? And what about like, like how are we doing CSS? And how are we like, how are we actually building the application? And like, how, how am I and other designers going to integrate on the team? It was like, I don't know, we just use CSS. And I just remember feeling like, no, this isn't a better way to work. Not for me. Um, in retrospect, it probably was, and it was just foreign to me. And I, and I understand that we all have constraints that we're dealing with and different concerns. Everybody's, you know, kind of like, you know, solving problems at some prioritized, in some prioritized fashion. And, and that's, you know, that's fair. Uh, but like, you know, like I'm on the team and this is like from where I was sitting. Uh, <laughs> uh, it did not feel more advanced. It felt like, it felt like, you know, uh, kind of like a big step back. And so the communication started to get more difficult again for me. Um, you know, one set of people working on one thing and another set of people were translating it. it went, I went back to writing, uh, you know, basic HTML and CSS because that's where I was comfortable and productive so that I could deliver things to my teammates. And then they would take these things and, you know, translate them just like back in the old days. <laughs> A couple of years prior, <laughs> uh, and you know, and there's and when that happens, there's like drift, and there's you know bias and inconsistency. Things just you know they change. You know, like you take a piece of information, uh, and you and you hand it off to someone else, and then they parse that information, and then and then they you know, and there's there's an interpreter, and then they hand it off to someone else, and, and like it, it kind of goes down the cycle. It's kind of like you know over the wall telephone. And then, you know, after Pedestal App, I mean, really actually, React came and kind of, kind of killed Pedestal App, it seemed like. Um, you know, there were, you know, now it was like, hey, Facebook has this, you know, right, great engineering support team that's all the resources in the world to, you know, design and, and ship a virtual DOM. And, and, and then we ended up with things like Ohm and Quiescent and, Reagent and all sorts of wrappers for React, and that became the thing. And then you know devs helped out and pitched in and were like, yeah, let's you know like we've got tools to like work with SAS, and you know it, from like from where I was sitting, it was like watcher scripts or running SAS locally. But if we wanted to really get things integrated nicely, maybe we would you know use JRuby so that we could JVM everything. Um, because, you know, SAS was still a, a Ruby gem. It was pre lib SAS at the time. And it all just felt sort of wonky still to me. But hey, you know, at least, at least designers were, were able to write in a language that we felt comfortable with and we, you know, we had some productivity instead of just using plain old CSS again. But like, it got better, but it wasn't quite there yet. Like, I still felt like handing over and translating HTML and CSS and working in silos and, and, and not really fully feeling integrated with the team. 
Um, I mean, I loved my team, and, and, and you know, everybody was great people, and I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I actually, would, I look back and I think those were some of the greatest times in my life. Um, but you know, there was, there was, like, it was hard. It was really challenging to like figure out how to, how to work, you know, what, what's the best way to work? You know, like, how do we work together? And, um, you know, different people have different concerns and priorities, right? That's, that's the, that's the, that's a, that's a theme. And even though we're trying to solve the same problems to build stuff for people who don't care about the technology that we're using, really, um, you know, we, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And I felt like a lot of time the attention was being spent on developing tech, and it was just really hard to sync up on, on, on the concerns, on common concerns, because you know, like I really wanted my tools and the rest of the dev team really wanted their tools and we just like, right, like, but, but like all the while we're, we, we're trying to ship something for other people that, that don't really care about either of our tools. <laughs> we have a common goal. And like somewhere along the way it was like, okay, you know, if I'm going to hand over, if I'm going to hand over uh, HTML and CSF, CSS, if that's going to be the deliverable, then I'm going to use a static site generator and, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, that way I can at least take advantage of some, some tools that felt comfortable and productive to me. And I got into middleman, which was like, so I'm back in Ruby <laughs> and I've got SAS and I've got Hamlet, I've got all the things that I want and, and, and all the things that other designers that I worked with wanted. There was like a community of people and tools and we had all this stuff. And it was awesome. I was able to prototype, you know, uh, applications really quickly, uh, spike out the behavior, show it to a customer, and you know, and and get the context together so that like there was a full sort of communication of what it is that we're trying to build together, and 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 you know, then hand that off as a as a uh, uh, as a static site, and you know, I had partials and layouts and 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 everything was great, and even got into the, you know, it was like, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, like we were building components, but not, you know, not like React components. We were eventually, ultimately building React components, but, but like for me, I was building like little modular pieces that are like looking at a bootstrap or anything else like that, where I could just kind of like assemble these application ideas. And, and it was, it was really starting to click. You know, uh, it was still separate from the application. It still wasn't a first class citizen. I still had, I still had this like code base that I was maintaining and then like, and I would ship off the HTML to be, you know, dealt with and assets to be dealt with. And, um, you know, again, when we're not sharing code, it feels like, like there's a lot of opportunity for some of that drift to kind of sneak in again and inconsistencies start to build up. So, we, uh, some, you know, some, some, some teammates, uh, I see some people here that, that actually contributed to this, and, and there's also a good friend, Alex Reddington, that, um, you know, uh, he saw my pain and felt my pain and, and was like, man, we, we gotta figure out how to, how, to, how to make this work. And so we actually like embedded a middleman application into the repo so that that, that was actually the source of truth for all of the templates and all of the styles. And it was, you know, it was again a first class citizen in the application. You know, we had everything kind of wired up and working with FigWheel and, and you know, but, but again it was middleman. It was a middleman application like literally embedded in a, in a closure repo. So, you know, it, to me it felt like winning. It was like, it was awesome. It was this like, I was productive, devs were productive, we were shipping software that worked that customers were happy with. But like, you know, it's kind of complicated. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's not, it's not fully baked. We never actually took it anywhere. Uh, you know, we never actually finished it. Uh, but it was, a, it was a really cool sort of approach that um, did feel like we were all working together as a team. I like have an incredible amount of respect for programmers and engineering. Um, even it's like I, 
I don't come from from there, you know. And like it started, it started as sort of like this really awful relationship <laughs> to me, you know, where uh, I just I, again I never understood why things were the way they were, and why we couldn't just make it work until I started programming myself. And and you know and as I struggled, people people came to my aid. People helped me out. Uh, you know, they, they helped me become, you know, a better programmer. And, and I could share what, what I wanted to share with people, which was a, a different perspective on things. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't always easy. You know, I, I worked, you know, really hard to kind of keep up. And I, and, I, and I really, really care about, like, how it is that we work together. So, yeah, I'm really grateful. Um, I, I left Cognitech after six years of, of being at Relevance and Cognitech to go work at a product company. And, 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 um, and that essentially, like, I actually ended up leaving and uh, not working in Clojure. <laughs> I went for a year uh, and took, uh, took some time off. Um, and actually ended up working in just a regular React JavaScript stack using Webpack and React and Redux and, and NPM and everything like that. And um, I actually had a really fantastic time over there. You know, and I don't think that it had anything to do with the fact that it wasn't closure. It's just that it was like, it was different. And I, I think that it gave me an opportunity to, to look at some more of the fundamentals of JavaScript and, and, and kind of what, what everybody was doing in closure. Uh, interacting with React, and it just changed my view of things quite a bit. And you know, um, I think I think that I think that it was a really really great experience because like it also showed me that like the JavaScript community has incredible tools, and they it's, it, it, it is our community. The JavaScript community is our community. We're, we're, even though we're, we're you know, in, in closure land here, we are ultimately are like, right, like we're hanging out in the browser. And like we can take advantage of these tools. And the thing is, is it seems to me like ultimately it comes back down to people of different concerns coming together and working together. And there's just a lot of like really, really fantastic design tools in the JavaScript space. Um, so it, 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 was, it was a good experience to me. I think there's a lot that we can, you know, we can, we can learn and take advantage of uh, from over there. Um, and this is where I think it was about me, maybe, and, and not necessarily the devs or the closure community. Uh, I think I think that like maybe in a lot of ways, when I look back at some of my frustrations and difficult times, it was it was actually more about my just not understanding and like not not you know l learning's hard and and when you don't have the context for you know why it is that people are making the decisions that they're making, it's easy to to jump to some assumptions and ha and and start to feel like maybe the wrong things are being focused on, or maybe you feel like you're being left out. Uh, I felt like I was being left out, but I wasn't. You know, I was actually being embraced and, and, and helped every step along the way. And after like hanging out in the in JavaScript space, it, you know, and, and, and you know, it, I, I, it gave me some time to kind of reflect on all of the experiences that I had had with such wonderful people. And, um, yeah, I uh, decided that I was going to leave the company that, that I, I, I'd gone to work with and uh, hang out with uh, some closure developers again. And I got to work on a project uh, with, with Cognitech again uh, as a, I contracted on a gig with, uh, with David Chalemsky. And it was an Arachne app. And so, you know, we were working the same code base together. I, I would design wireframes to communicate design intent, just like you know any any other thing, and you'd do uh, you know, Photoshop design or whatever, whatever, whatever I needed to do in order to, to figure out what we were building, and um, and then I would go and build the front end, and and we started 
thinking about this middleman approach because we were so productive. And then I decided to ditch it in favor of just writing RUM components and Hiccup. And as we did this, it was like really cool because I was I, I, I felt productive. I was I was hanging out and and, and making static um, hiccup and able to sort of stand up the prototypes just like I was working in Middleman or Ruby or anything else like that. But um, you know, as soon as we started to integrate the behavior, we, we realized, okay, now things are getting kind of complicated again. We, I have this like nice clean structure that represents what it is that we're looking at in the browser. And as soon as that started to get detangled, then there's all this other additional logic that gets put in and, and it's like I didn't have the context on, on what it is that we're, we're making anymore. You know, it's like I couldn't, I, it, it felt, I, I was scared to touch it with, you know, like because it's going to break. And, and, and I won't understand why. And that's okay, but we're trying to stay productive together. So um, actually, David, you know, had, had, had looked at what we were doing and he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, I really like looking at this like nice clean, you know, markup that you put together. And it, it, it is, it's like when we look at this like integration of the two, it, it starts to get really, really messy. Um, so uh, Luke Vanderhart uh, created um, a, a library called Heat. Uh, it's a hiccup in live adapter transforms. And so essentially what we're doing is, you know, we ended up going back to the old way of working with where the way that we were with HTML and static uh, generated sites, but with hiccup data structures. And I could write these nice little templates that were just very easy to read and they were static, but they represented all of the different states that the application could be composed of and little tiny components, little functions. And and then you could go and grab them and, and, and apply transforms to them and you know, make them into a real application. But the, so all of the logic and is, is sitting in one space that, and it communicates that really clearly. And then all of the structure for the, for, the, for, the, for the templating is in another space. There's more code, but it's like the separation adds some real interesting clarity uh, to, to the project. And we found that to be a really great way to work because at the end of the day, we created a convention that we, you know, have a handshake on in terms of what it is that we're going to apply these transforms on in terms of selectors. And I didn't worry about whether or not I was going to break the app anymore because I wouldn't touch those IDs and, and I would style everything on, on classes and we, everything just kind of worked. Um, and we were really, really productive. It was great. Like, I think that that's like an example of like design and development working closely together. Uh, to make something great, to make something better, is like, like when we figure out how it is that we want to work with one another and we take the time to communicate and, and figure out where the parts are, the friction is, and then, and then address it, you know, like, like we, we had done it many other ways, whether or not we actually reach an ultimate solution is not really the point, it's, it's just that we're, at the end of the day, again, shipping stuff for people who don't care about the tech that we're using. So, you know, if we can have a really great experience doing it and, and, and actually deliver, then awesome. Um, and, you know, and, and in this case of like actually sharing code together, it's not like, you know, there's this like translation that, that's taking place. You know, it's, 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 we're, we're in the same space, you know, having a conversation with one another, which I feel like leads to just a better work experience, leads to a better product. And it's just that that's, that's, that's a better way of working. Not, I think, in retrospect, when, 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 you know, when originally when I was thinking about Closure Script 1, it was a better way of working, but who was it better for? It was, it was a better way for that person. Um, it wasn't better for me. And if we weren't able to work together, then it's not better for our customer. Because, again, they don't care about our tech. They just want it to work. And I feel like, you know, in this case, this is a great example of like, of, of kind of like, you know, <laughs> uh, n n you, focusing on, on tech as much as it needs to be focused on in order for us to get to the next place. And I think that shared code is, is, is something that is important. You know, it, 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 it allows for there to be less drift because, 
because we, we, we're both taking, like we're all taking responsibility for it. And, um, and also, you know, uh, I like paired programming. I, I like working with people and, and having a different sort of set of skills and having someone else with a different set of skills and us like hanging out and learning from each other. Um, I feel like that's, you know, there, it's an opportunity uh, for everybody to grow. So today, I work at Reify Health, like I said, and, and we design and develop in Clojure. And we have a design system uh, that, you know, that the product shares assets to build products. It's actually in the app. It's all in Clojure. Um, we use Hiccup. We have multiple apps. We're doing stuff with mobile, and we're, you know, it's, it, we have all these different environments, but it's all in one space, and it's, and it's, it's actually Really, really cool. The team is super amazing. Uh, we work together, we share knowledge. It's like, it's, it's like the next thing, you know? Like, it's like kind of like going from, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's also a bunch of people that I worked with at Cognitech and, and Relevant, so it's, the, you know, the, uh, that too is, is, has been really interesting. But um, it's kind of like, it's everything that, I, that, that I've always wanted is to actually be able to collaborate with other people on making something real. Um, we use Reframe, Ohm, Next, and, and, and Hiccup, and SAS, and we've got LibSAS now, so everything's really fast. Um, we don't have like all of the perfect workflows, right? Like there were things that like, like when I looked at Middleman, when I worked in, in Middleman to like generate a static site, it had these like, it was like really focused and did these set of things well. Um, and it, it allowed for me to be able to put together things in a way that it just felt smarter, easier, um, so that I could deliver things to other people. And again, that, but that, that sort of supported this other workflow that didn't feel quite right. Um, and now, working in, in Clojure, like I feel like I don't think that I could have, I don't think I could have accomplished what we're accomplishing today seven years ago. Or, I mean, well, look, obviously I couldn't have because ClojureScript hadn't been invented yet. Um, but like still, it's like looking, looking like, looking back, like there's, yes, a part of it was me, but a, a, another part of it was the community has like grown in, in a major, major way. Like we have tools today that we did not have then, and it is so much better. Um, so I, I'm writing this des design system at Reify and, uh, and putting together all of the design uh, components and like bits and pieces like, you know, what icons are in the app or what colors are in the app. And these things are, you know, sitting in, uh, you know, color variables in SAS files or they're in SVG. And, you know, I, I, I got tired of using the web inspector and then trying to figure out what file it was at so that I could then go to the, uh, you know, the, the color variable and then just this like feedback loop that was like kind of crazy workflow. And I was like, so I just, I need to like, I need to push this, this, you know, style guide forward so that we can expose these things and they're always running when the app is running in development. And so I like wrote it all by hand in like a, you know, in a, in a file and it was, uh, it was a lot of work. And, and one of the teammates, uh, Tom Kidd, he, he looks at it and he was like, whoa. He's like, that's crazy work. So he, he created SourceMunch. And SourceMunch basically uh, was using Lumo. It's, it's, it's an open source library that, that, that Reify put together. Um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure the community gets to get some of these links or whatnot uh, from things that I've mentioned. Uh, but sh short story is, is that it goes and reads files and grabs the data from those files and then, you know, can do stuff with it. So, like, we're essentially taking the data from the SAS file and the variables and then, like, generating all of the things that needed to be generated to create these swatches in the browser. And the same thing with, you know, parsing the SVG. It has all the icon data and everything like that. And so, so now the template's like really small instead of like this giant hiccup file. <laughs> and, and it doesn't have to be like manually edited in order to keep it up to date. So that's really cool. And um, again, that's a great example, I feel like, of a great collaboration between, you know, design and development. 
So in a lot of ways, you know, when I, when I first started, I didn't understand Clojure. I didn't like Clojure. <laughs> I liked Clojure programmers, <laughs> you know? And I really wanted to work with everyone really badly. Uh, I felt clumsy and sometimes stupid uh, when working with Clojure. Uh, it felt like the tools weren't made for people like me. And, you know, over the time, this was a reoccurring theme, but, you know, great people um, helped to make great improvements and actually helped to work with me so that I could see that it wasn't just me or you. It was like a thing that we share. And, um, you know, today I can say that Clojure is as good a stack as I've ever worked in. From my perspective, it's, it's like, I, it's, it's awesome, you know, like, and it's getting better all the time. I don't miss Rails. Uh, you know, or working in Webpack. I mean, I don't miss Hamel. Hiccup's been fun. You know, I've got some parentheses management down now. Uh, you know, even with my unfinished Emacs config. I don't miss Emacs. You know, it's not about the role or responsibility, but more about working together to build something great. You know, we share code, and we focus on the intent of what we're building, and we focus on something works, how something works or how it feels. You know, the tech is important, and it will always need innovation and improvement, but like, you know, I know that's, you know, you, you hear it all the time, the software is about people. And, and they, again, they don't care about the tech that we're using. Like, it's really, really awesome to today be working in Clojure with Clojure developers in all of the files and with all the tools and to be shipping value to people. I mean, we are making software for people who are actually using it. And I get to talk to them through user interviews and ask them about problems that they have with their business. And they, you know, tell me about their problems. And, and we design features. And we ship those features. And we get, and it's like, they're stoked. I mean, they're, they're thrilled that we get to pay attention to things that are going to affect their lives and make them better. And like, we're making beautiful software. It's not just, it's not just stuff that works. It works is the base level. If you think of like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs or whatnot, when we, it's like it's like saying food is edible. We don't we don't think about. I'm not going to ask you. Hey, would you like to go and get something edible for dinner? Let's not go and get poisoned. No, it's 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 like it should work as the base foundation. And then we layer in other things until we figure out a way to delight and, and make things feel great. And that happens on the final product. It also happens in our tools, in our workflow, and our communications with each other. Today, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, over, over the wall. It doesn't feel like, you know, I do this, you do that. And, you know, and we don't ever have to talk to one another. It actually feels like I can collaborate and have a, a really meaningful conversation with my teammates to, again, do something that is not about us. So I just wanted to take the moment to say thanks to some people at Cognitect and, and actually everybody here, really, as engineers that are here. Um, for moving the ball forward and including someone like me on the team. I think that, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really grateful for that. And I also wanted to thank some artists out there because I wouldn't be who I am without them. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's what I got. Thanks.